today is we're talking about the next chapter. The next chapter is something that we all need to definitely focus on. Now, then what is the next chapter today? The next chapter is so important that we all appreciate why it's necessary. I describe myself as a community leader and of course as a social entrepreneur. Community leader in the sense that this is the two most important things that we need today in the 21st century. Everybody is talking about 21st century skills for 21st century jobs. But incidentally, we we'll, we'll live in a society right now that we have issues at stake. What are the issues in the community that we, we need to look at? Why it's essential that we have, we begin to work on our social enterprise and look at how we can solve these problems. Problems with education, robberies, housing, enterprise, and healthcare provision. Many fine words have been spoken by politicians and governments to deal with issues. Africa's next chapter. Problems with these issues are something we need to address. We need, we need to look at. We have issues in the communities. We have issues at community-based issues that we need, we need to address properly. I look at issues like social enterprise. That in, we're looking at these challenges because when we, look at, when, when we first think about what is there that we can help, we've seen people talk every day and deliver grandiose ideas and schemes that are meant to solve the problems. But it doesn't really solve the problem. It doesn't really solve the problem. And many of you can attest to that. We look at issues, at the community issues, like, like I, I said earlier about robberies and other things that is going on. How can we solve that? We have 70,000 people coming out of universities, and yet there are no jobs for them. I believe that one of the main things that we need to look at is how can we create jobs and one of the areas that I'm looking at is social entrepreneurship, making the communities themselves work for it, instead of relying and depending on just these government and other agencies that would help us. The community has always been at the helm of growth. Now, community leaders, which is vital. Community leaders are necessary, people that will drive the entire influence of driving people to be able to accept responsibility of their lives first, and also accept responsibilities of the community. Now, how does that work? Now, social entrepreneurship is something that would be the first cue. Now, when you look at the community, as the slides are going on, I, you realize that we already have fundamental or foundational stuff that would help us. I look at things like in, 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 a, in a village, like my village, I notice most of them, they have native intelligence. They don't need to have a degree to look after themselves. But how can we empower them? How can we help them? How can we assist them? How can we help them rise from those doldrums of lack and which creates all sorts of challenges for them? And so we need to get to the point where we, every one of us, should be responsible for this scenario. And one of it is, like I suggested, community leadership and social entrepreneurship. Now, the social entrepreneur today the leadership is one of the greatest things I've learned about leadership is somebody that mobilizes, influences people, goal-driven, and influences people to the, influences them to accept responsibility of their own actions and also with, with a common purpose, which is vital. Now, I, I know we have gender because of uh, cultural and traditional values and stuff like that. We tend to think that ladies don't matter. But in my opinion, in my book, Ladies matter. Women matter greatly. Women matter greatly. And I salute every woman. Because I, my background is so, I mean, it's a very interesting, but my father died when I was 11 years old. It was my mother that brought us up, six siblings, through school, through university, and took me abroad and tried to educate me in every way she can. Now, that's, a, that's an asset. That's an added value to my life. Some of the great things that I do today is as a result of what my mother taught me. Now, it doesn't mean that she has a Harvard degree or has a university degree, but she has native intelligence and value systems that would help in the community. Now, if we project that, those things, and help others in the community, can you imagine how we can reduce the social deprivation when we use everything at our disposal? Now, social enterprise is, is one of the key things that I, I can't help but drive home. Because if we help every little person, right now on my street where I live, there's a lady that does roasted plantain where she sort of sells it 
to people. And I, I felt, wait a minute, if I invest in this woman so she can enhance what she's doing, I'm helping a whole family. So what I did was that the entire road, anyone that sells roasted plantain, I began to invest 100 CDs, each, each one of them, and teach them things that, they, that can help them. Now, as a result of that, they have now been able to also make profit enough to help others. Now, that's the kind of thing that we're driving at, to elevate poverty, to help them get off the sad uh, road that they're going down. Now, if we look at situations now, my definition or my understanding of social enterprise is social enterprise that invests in people and provides health care and education, creates jobs and generates wealth for the community, delivering services in a way to overcome the daily difficulties in people's lives. Could you move to the next slide, please? I have these few quotes that I learned from my father, the few times that I was with him up to the age of 12. He says, if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go far, you go together. And he says, you cannot, do, you cannot keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results. That's Albert, Albert Einstein. And then he says, an Ashanti proverb says, if you, you must act as if you cannot fail. Then the other one that I can never forget this one. He says, you cannot isolate yourself and be effective. But I remember the greatest one that I remember is the one from Paul of Tarsus, which he said, I can do all things through Christ. We live in a community that is a faith-based community. Faith influences a lot of people in our society, in our communities now. So if there are certain things in our faith that would help stir us up to do work, to begin to get off this notion of entitlement, we all have this notion that somebody's got to help me, the government's got to help me. But the idea is to empower people at the base level so they can be able to change the cities. Finally, my conclusion of the next chapter is that it's about breaking down mental as well as barriers and about possibilities where others see only problems. Then you need, that's where the leaders come in, to begin to enlighten us, to begin to empower us, begin to teach us and guide us and lead us into ways that would help us begin to do something with our hands. I have a simple philosophy that I, I go around all the villages in Accra, in Ghana, teaching. I call it the head, heart, hands. When the mind is renewed, when their mind is renewed towards who they are and what they can do, when their heart is convicted about that, they, they don't have to be ashamed. They're not defined by what they're doing. They're not defined by their luck. They're not defined by what is missing in their lives, but they're defined by who they are and what they can do. And then they begin to work with their hands. So the communities must work. So the ethos that I carry, the ethos I believe would help us, is when we begin to empower individuals in the, from the community level to begin to work with their hands. And here's what, how we're going to do it. I call it the dream of destiny. Number one, to positively impact over one million young people of sub-Saharan descent. Now, here's the point. My generation was the alpha generation. The next generation, I've called them the omega generation. And these, this generation with a new way of thinking because they're thinking different. They think different. They are wired different. And it's our responsibility as the previous generation to help. There's going to be a synergy between two generations. That would enable us to work on these things. Number two, the new way of thinking is so critical. I, I, I was amazed when my son Charles at, begins to discuss stocks and financial investments with me at 14. When I was 14, I was chasing young girls at Wesley Girls High School. So there's a new way of thinking. My son at 14 is talking about buying uh, land, investing in land in Ghana, thinking he says that land appreciates uh, about 38%. How did he know that? It's the new way of thinking. And I need to embrace that. I need to welcome that. And I need to undergird him, let him learn some more. The third thing, new possibilities. There's a ocean of opportunities out here in Africa. There's an ocean of opportunities. The question is that how, do you, how, do you, how are you able to deserve Opportunities. Opportunities are passing us every day of our lives. And now we know that these opportunities are possible. I sat back and I went to my own village in Cape Coast, Anumabo, and I saw the Cape Coast people, Fanti people are naturally comical. So I said, why don't we start a, com a comic, a comedy center or something? Because that's what we do best. And package it and price it. Put value on it and make the money. The third thing is new opportunities in the brave new world. To empower them to create a lasting wealth that is transgenerational. Our generation, the, our, the generation before, the alpha, they didn't know how to transfer wealth, so it didn't help. Now, 
my most important thing that I want to close with is about good governance, the rule of law, and the good democratic principles, without which we cannot progress into the next chapter. This, this last point undergirds everything. Because where peace abounds, you can do a lot. Look at Rwanda. Today, Rwanda is at a place where everybody has become a model to all the nations. But for just a few years ago, weeks, they had problems, issues. But I'm so proud that through good governance, through the rule of law, through good democratic processes, reached a place where they've developed. That's what is going to happen to the rest of Africa. And that's the dream of destiny. And I know that the next chapter has this in mind. The next chapter is that we should all think possibility. Thank you for your time.